Hello students, welcome to Target IES. I hope you are having a wonderful day. And let me make it very clear before starting this particular module. I might be teaching a very basic concept of strength of material, but don't ignore this. Because if you are preparing for state PSC, right, he is going to ask you questions from very simple topics only. For example, today I am going to teach you type of stresses and type of strain. आप सोचोगे कि भैया इसमें क्या है इंपॉर्टेंट ये तो काफी सिंपल टॉपिक है मैं तो एडवांस पढ़ के जाऊंगा ही इज गोइंग टू ट्विस्ट द क्वेश्चन इन सच अ वे इवन दो इट इज अ वेरी सिंपल टॉपिक ही इज गोइंग टू ट्विस्ट अ क्वेश्चन इन सच अ वे दैट यू विल डेफिनेटली मेक अ मिस्टेक इन इट सो वट एवर आई एम टीचिंग कॉन्सेंट्रेट ऑन इट ओके इफ यू हैव एनी स्मॉल डाउट आस्क इन अ व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप एंड गेट इट क्लियर इंस्टेंटली सो दैट यू विल नेवर लूज मार्क्स इन स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ मेटीरियल In today's module, I am going to teach you two simple concepts: type of stresses and type of strains. So let us start with type of stresses. In the last module, I have given you a brief understanding about stresses. Right? What is stress? If you are applying force on a particular body, Newton Bahia ne kaha tha ki every action has equal and opposite reaction. Right? So this body, whatever is there, it will try to resist this load. Right? Right? Obviously, to resist that equal and opposite reaction, देना पड़ेगा. Agreed? So what is this reaction which it is giving? Let us call it internal reaction. ठीक है? Internal reactive force. Internal reaction. Okay. So this internal reaction which is being developed in my body per unit area, I am calling it as stress. Right? Total internal reaction per unit area. So you can just divide the force whatever is acting divided by area. You will be getting your stress in this particular condition. I hope it is very clear, right? So what that stress? It is nothing but the internal reaction being developed within my body per unit area a particular unit area le lena usme kitna internal reaction develop ho raha hai that is nothing but stress so coming to the concept of stress let me make it very clear before going into this particular uh, concept ee example le lenge okay same example but in this i am not applying load here but i am applying load here what will happen stress aayega ki nahi aayega स्ट्रेस नहीं आएगा फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट एस ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ एरेजर सी टू अंडरस्टैंड स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ मेटीरियल ऑलवेज कीप एरेजर विथ यू ठीक है बिकॉज यू कैन डू वेरियस थिंग्स विद दिस पर्टिकुलर एरेजर एंड क्लियर यूर कॉन्सेप्ट एक काफी अच्छा सा मेटीरियल है टू अंडरस्टैंड द इंटर स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ मेटीरियल फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट एस ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इफ आई एम अप्लाइंग फोर्स ऑन इट ओके परपेंडिकुलर टू द सर्फेस ऑफ दिस एरेजर obviously it is not cracking right that means what it is doing it is able to resist whatever the load i am applying on it agreed or not right so the internal resisting force whatever has been developed within eraser per unit area that is much stress okay i hope it is very clear right now let us see what is happening instead of applying force perpendicular to the surface i am applying parallel to it theek okay? hai as soon as i am applying here what is happening it is moving away agreed दिख रहा है कि नहीं दिख रहा है छोटा हो गया है क्या सो वेन एवर यू आर ट्राइंग टू अप्लाई द फोर्स इन दिस डायरेक्शन माई एरेजर इज मूविंग अवे ओके सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग इन दिस केस देर वोट बी एनी स्ट्रेस बींग डेवलप्ड लेट मी मेक इट वेरी क्लियर अगर स्ट्रेस आ रहा है बॉडी में देन डेफिनेटली देर विल बी सम आर सम डिफॉर्मेशन विथ इन द बॉडी देर विल बी डेफिनेटली सम चेंज विथ इन द डायमेंशन ऑफ अ बॉडी आई होप इट इज वेरी क्लियर राइट इन दिस केस वॉट इज हैपनिंग इफ यू आर जस्ट पुशिंग द बॉडी it will be just moving away okay if the body is free to move stress usme nahi aayega i hope it is very clear right koi deformation nahi rahega koi stress nahi rahega koi strain nahi rahega if you are trying to just push this there won't be any change in dimension there won't be any stress there won't be any strain wahi aap iske upar load apply karne ki koshish karna so obviously as the load is being applied from the top it will try to expand from the sides right you can imagine it i hope it is very clear stress bhi aa raha hai bhi strain bhi aa raha hai so concept is clear right so this is some basic things which you should be knowing now let us see what are the various type of stresses we have first we have direct stresses and indirect stresses so coming to direct stresses we have normal and we have shear stress what is this normal stress and shear stress let us try to understand If the force is acting perpendicular to the surface, okay. अगर force कुछ इस तरह act कर रहा है on your body perpendicular to the surface, जैसे मैंने दिखाया था अभी eraser पे, the force is acting like this. 
then we are calling it as normal force or normal stress or direct stress. I hope it is very clear. So, what will be the stress in this case? F divided by A. If the total force acting is F, that much is being resisted by the body also. So, force divided by area of cross section of this particular body, whatever we have, that will give me the normal or direct stress in my body. I hope it is very clear, right? So, in this again, there are two categories. One is tensile stress and compressive stress. A jo normal stress ban hai, normal stress or direct stress, you can again subclassify as tensile stress and compressive stress. Just by seeing the names, I hope you understood what is going to happen, right? For example, if you have a body, you are applying force something like this. Theke? So, what is happening here? Obviously, the body is being uh, acted by compressive forces. So, obviously, the body is being compressed and whatever stress is being generated, that is your compressive stress. If the body is experiencing some stretching force, if you are trying to stretch the body, obviously, it is trying to elongate and this particular stress, whatever is being developed, we are calling tensile stress tensile stress. A ho jayega compressive stress in this case. In this case, you will be getting tensile stress. I hope this is a very simple concept and you are understanding, right? Koi problem nahi hai na uh, Let me make it one more thing very clear. This tensile stress, compressive stress to kaafi easy hai. But hum jo padne wale na shear stress, iska thoda dhyan me rakhiyega. So, one more thing. Let us take one eraser. Okay? Just fix it on one side. Yani, let us imagine there is a beam which is fixed on one side. And then what you are doing, you are trying to apply the load. So, what is happening here? Yaan pe ek beam gaya. This area is of whatever I have shown. Just imagine that this is a big beam which you are using in the houses. And it is fixed on one side. Okay. So, obviously, whenever you are trying to apply a compressive force. So, how the diagrammatic representation will be? Here, you are getting the force. Obviously, every action has equal and opposite reaction. You are pushing something against this particular wall. So, obviously, wall will also try to what? Uh, send you back. So, there will be force coming in this direction. Right? Agreed or not? Here wall tha. Force kuch is tarah se kar raha tha. So, it will obviously resist by applying force like this. Right? So, the denotion of compressive force, even though you are applying only one particular force, okay. So, originally what is happening, it will be represented something like this. Agar aap pe P karoge, pe bhi P aega. Concept is clear, right? Same happens with tensile forces also. Let us say, one side it is fixed, okay. You are just supporting it and on the other side, you are trying to stretch, right. So, same concept applies for this also. Your body Diagrammatic representation of force will be something like this. Okay. Now, let us see what is happening in shear stress. In shear stress, the forces are acting tangential to the surface of my body. Like how you are applying this uh, shear stresses. Let us try to understand with the help of example. Okay. So, in steel structures, I have taught you connections topic, right? Yaha pe humne use kiya tha different type of joints, right? Lab joint, butt joint. So, if you are not civil student, if you are mechanical student, you can completely avoid whatever I am teaching you, okay? Is me jane ki zarurat nahi hai, what are the different types of joints, everything. But, you can imagine this, right? If there is a connection, if you want to connect to two different members. So, what you do? You will just make a hole in between these two plates and you will keep a bolt inside it and now you cannot separate this easily. I hope it is very clear, right? So, let us say this is my bolt and these are my two plates which I want to attach, okay? So, now let us say I am applying force on these plates. So, what is happening? This bolt is resisting these two plates to get separated, agreed or not? So, your bolt pe kya aega? Shear stress aega. Kaise aega? Let us try to understand. How this shear stress is coming on this bolt? Let us try to understand with diagrammatic representation, okay? Here pe tha bolt. This is my body 1, this is my body 2. So, at this surface, okay, at this surface, the force is acting. What is, how it is acting? Tangential to the body. For example, let us say, I am cutting this bolt into two pieces just to understand what is happening. Okay, agar aap cut kar doge bolt ko, so you will be getting some circular cross section here, circular cross section here, agreed or not? So, whatever the force is being acted 
so it is being resisted by this circular cross section agreed or not pi by 4 d square jo bhi hai that is the area which is actually resisting this force p right tangentially jo bhi force aa raha tha it is being resisted by this area what will be the shear stress load divided by area in this case so p divided by pi by 4 d square you will be getting your shear stress i hope concept is very clear right concept samajh mein aa gaya so what is your shear stress the tangential force per unit area that is the force acting tangentially across the section i am calling it as shear stress clear next bending stress so this whatever i have taught you so far normal stress and shear stress they are the direct stress agar load aapne apply kiya so the stress is being developed in the body that's why i'm calling direct stresses now coming to indirect stresses so here we are not just applying the load we are trying to bend the member okay so what is happening in case of uh, bending stresses so let us try to understand this bending stresses and torsional stresses or the indirect stresses being generated in your body so coming to first one which is bending stress concept kafi simple hai see just imagine uh you have one beam one side it is fixed so what you are doing you are applying certain load okay you are applying certain load what will happen just try to understand obviously it will try to what it will try to bend like this whenever you are applying the load obviously it is trying to bend like this agreed or not so because this member is bent there will be certain stresses being developed in my body right so these stresses i am calling as bending stresses okay a kafi ek darya hai a kafi important concept hai and in future modules i am going to derive lot of things based on this bending stress this is going to be a very important term for us in future chapters okay ek pura chapter hai jahan pe hum sirf padhai karenge what is the bending stress being developed within the body but now let us try to understand whenever a force is acting on the beam okay or any member and it is trying to bend what is happening let us try to understand if in this particular case if you have a fixed beam and you are applying a certain load it will be bending in this manner right so kya ho raha you can clearly see the top member it is being stretched you can feel it right just hold the eraser on one side and apply the load okay so you can clearly see the bottom member it got compressed it got shrinked and the top member whatever is there jo length phaile tha usse bhi zyada length aapko dikhai dega that means the top part is experiencing the tensile stress and the bottom part is experiencing the compressive stress when it comes to bending stress i hope the concept is clear right similarly if you have a simply supported beam simply supported beam means both sides it is supported okay okay in the first case i was talking about cantilever beam now i am talking about simply supported beam so in cantilever so the top portion was subjected to tensile stress the bottom portion was subjected to compressive stress ye do clear hai aapko now i am talking about simply supported beam so in simply supported beam when the load is being act obviously the body will deflect it will deflect something like this agreed or not use your common sense eraser ko kuch bend karne ki koshish karna you can clearly see the shape of the particular eraser so what is happening here you can clearly see the top part is compressed it got shrinked and bottom part it got elongated so yahan pe kya ho raha hai compressive stresses are coming at the top tensile stresses are coming at the bottom ye to clear hai na so whenever you had a cantilever load being applied top tensile stress bottom compressive stress simply supported beam whenever the load is applied the top compressive stress and bottom tensile stress concept is clear for you samajh me aa gaya na the stress caused in layers of the member due to bending phenomena in the beams we are calling it as bending stress next let us see the twisting stress okay or torsional shear stress so torsion or twisting of the member ye kaise hoga for example let us say if you are applying uh, you take a shaft okay a circular shaft and you are trying to apply some load tangential to it okay tangential to the surface tangential to the surface so you are trying to twist the surface so what is happening let us say there is a eraser one side it is fixed a cantilever beam and try to twist it and try to twist it apply the force something like this okay 
so what is happening you can clearly see right you can see the how this whatever this beam is trying to deform so why it is trying to deform the stresses whatever is being developed it is because of the twisting of this particular beam and the stresses generated in this case i am calling it as torsional shear stress or twisting stress obviously a full chapter is there which is dedicated to torsional shear stress and we are going to study this in deep in that particular chapter so far whatever you have to understand is done at the basic level once we go to advanced level you will understand this concept in more detail i hope it is very clear now let us see types of strain and from here you can expect lot of questions to come if you are preparing for state psc give it five star kafi important concept hai first of all what is strain okay so i have told whenever there is certain stress being developed uska clear indication hai ki body is being deformed agreed or not right agar body deform hi nahi ho raha hai then there won't be any stress in that particular body so now let us try to understand we have a body okay which is deformed you have applied certain load and it is deformed how it will be deformed let us try to understand if you are applying compressive forces okay on the body so obviously kya hoga as you are trying to shrink that body wo to shrink ho jayega but body has certain material in it right so if it is shrinking in one dimension obviously it will become bulged in other dimension agreed or not so it will change its dimension something like this samajh mein aa gaya na so obviously its all dimensions are being changed same happens in tensile forces being applied also if there is tensile forces being applied obviously it is trying to stretch it elongate ho jayega but what happened to the other dimensions other dimensions will be decreasing right one dimension it increases other dimension it has to decrease material to utna hi rahega na material extra to add nahi ho raha hai so concept is very clear right so the change in length divided by original length we are calling it as strain okay concept clear hai it is just the ratio of change in length and original length ab boliyega what are units of strain stress units i hope you know in the last module we have studied in detail newton per meter square what are units of strain ab bataiye remember the strain will not have any units because it is a ratio so change in length by original length meter divided by meter so units cancelled there won't be any units for strain i hope concept is very clear for you so in this strain we have different types of uh, classification again longitudinal strain lateral strain volumetric strain shear strain let us see it carefully and questions can come from here so bear with me first one is longitudinal strain okay so longitudinal axis ke hisab se whatever the change in length divided by original length aayega that is your longitudinal strain for example just see this body so this is its longitudinal axis along the length okay so the force is acting along the length so obviously the body dimensions are being changed so this whatever there is right the change in length divided by original length so you will be getting your longitudinal strain for example uh you had a column something like this okay you have applied the load p so because of this load original length was l now it got decreased by delta l okay kya ho gaya body it got decreased by delta l as the load is acting so the delta l divided by l that will be my longitudinal strain generally denoted by epsilon like this okay i hope it is very clear right concept samajh mein aa gaya so let us say if this is my x axis i can represent it as epsilon x that means the strain along the x axis or longitudinal axis i hope it is very clear right so now let us talk about lateral strain maine abhi padhaya tha aapko if one dimension is changing obviously the other dimensions will also getting impact right it is nothing but linear deformation perpendicular to direction of applied load for example in the previous case i was talking about my longitudinal strain right you have applied the load and the dimensions have changed the change in dimension okay the change jitna change ho raha hai divided by its original length i got my longitudinal strain but now let us talk about the axis which is perpendicular to this okay for example let us try to imagine in three dimension okay 
फोर्स कुछ यहाँ पे अप्लाई किया था हमने सो ऑब्वियसली वट एवर यू आर गेटिंग इन दैट पर्टिकुलर डायरेक्शन ओके इन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ अप्लाइड लोड I called it as longitudinal strain. Okay, now perpendicular to it, what is happening? Obviously, अगर compressive force कुछ इस तरह से apply होगा, so obviously it is getting strained. At the same time, the sides will try to what expand. Agreed or not? So what is happening in this case? So in this case, your body will be changing something like this. यहाँ पे क्या हो रहा है? Your dimensions got increased, right? The change in that dimension divided by its original dimension, you will be getting your lateral strain. For example, let us take one shaft circular shaft and you apply certain force obviously wo kya hoga kuch is tarah se deform hoga agreed or not right it will deform something like this so what is the change in diameter now we are just measuring what is the diameter of this shaft divided by original diameter let us say the diameter original diameter is d and change in diameter okay so let us say the diameter right now after this compressive force being applied will be d1 okay what is the change the change is nothing but current diameter minus original diameter d1 minus d that will be your change in diameter divided by its original diameter you will be getting your lateral strain i hope it is very clear right samajh mein aa raha hai aapko concept so again it can be tensile or compressive in nature depending upon what depending upon your longitudinal strain agar longitudinal strain aapka compressive tha तो लैटरल स्ट्रेन आपका टेंसाइल रहेगा राइट सो इफ लॉन्गिट्यूडनल साइज इज बीइंग डिक्रीज सो ऑब्वियसली यूर लैटरल वट एवर साइड इट इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज राइट सो वन एक्सिस इज एक्सपीरियंसिंग कंप्रेसिव अदर एक्सिस विल एक्सपीरियंस द टेंसाइल स्ट्रेस कॉन्सेप्ट इज क्लियर सो सिमिलरली इफ यूर लॉन्गिट्यूडनल स्ट्रेन इज टेंसाइल इन नेचर ओके वॉट इज हैपनिंग इट इज टेंसाइल इन नेचर सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग टू इट्स इज डायमेंशन ऑफ डिक्रीजिंग दैट मीन्स compressive strain is being experienced along your lateral side i hope the concept is very clear samajh nahi aa gaya so these two points are again very important the lateral strain and uh, your longitudinal strain are opposite in nature concept to samajh nahi aa gaya na if one thing is experiencing compressive stress other will experience tensile stress okay done and every longitudinal strain it is associated with two lateral strains अगर एक लॉन्गिट्यूडनल स्ट्रेन बन रहा है बॉडी में सो ऑब्वियसली इट विल रिजल्ट इन टू लैटरल स्ट्रेन हाउ टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस टेक अ रेक्टेंगुलर बॉडी टेक अ रेक्टेंगुलर बॉडी ओके सो व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इफ यू आर टेकिंग अ रेक्टेंगल ए तो स्क्वायर दिख रहा है एक रेक्टेंगुलर बॉडी ले लेंगे समथिंग लाइक दिस ओके ये दिख रहा है ना रेक्टेंगुलर बॉडी so whenever you are trying to apply this longitudinal strain okay if you are applying force along the longitudinal axis so other two dimensions for example a to ho gaya length a to ho gaya aapka breadth and a to ho gaya aapka height so obviously other two dimensions are also going to change along the breadth you are going to get one lateral strain along the height you are going to get one more lateral strain so every longitudinal strain whatever you are getting in the body you will be getting two lateral strains along two other dimensions i hope it is very clear for you samajhne aa gaya concept now let us talk about volumetric strain strain kya tha change in dimension divided by original dimension similarly what will be volumetric strain it is nothing but change in the volume divided by original volume okay so let us say there is one body which has volume v okay somehow you heated it or whatever its volume got expanded to v1 tell me what is the volumetric strain in this particular case that will be nothing but change in volume change in volume kya tha v1 minus v divided by original volume original volume was v so this will be your volumetric strain i hope concept is very clear right volumetric strain is denoted by your epsilon v okay and you can write it as summation of change in uh, your strain in all three directions okay you can write your volumetric strain very important bit you can write it as epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z okay along three directions along the three dimensions you can add your strains and you will be getting your volumetric strain i hope it is very clear for you isme koi doubt nahi hai aapko right
So let us see what are the various strains being developed for different type of cross sections. Okay. So let us see what are the strains being developed for different cross sections. Let us start with rectangular coordinates. Okay. So rectangle me aapko pata hai. So all three dimensions are different. You will be having the length different. You will be having the height different and you will be having your breadth different. Right. So here what is happening? Let us try to understand. Instead of height, यहाँ पे thickness ले लिया है बस इतना ही फर्क है सो ऑब्वियसली देर विल बी लॉन्गिट्यूडनल स्ट्रेंथ राइट यू विल बी गेटिंग यूर एप्सलॉन एक्स विच इज लॉन्गिट्यूडनल स्ट्रेंथ यू विल बी गेटिंग एप्सलॉन वाई अलॉन्ग यूर वाई एक्सिस ऑल्सो यू कैन सी द चेंज राइट लेट एस ए दिस इज यूर एक्स एक्सिस ओके यू कैन सी द चेंज अलॉन्ग इट लेट एस ए दिस इज यूर वाई एक्सिस ओके यहाँ पे था थिकनेस और हाइट अलॉन्ग दिस ऑल्सो यू कैन सी द चेंज वेन द लोड इज बिंग अपलाइड सिमिलरली Along your width, let us say this is your z-axis. You can also change in dimension. See that change in dimension. So when it comes to rectangular coordinates, you will be getting all sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z. Sorry, epsilon x, epsilon y, and epsilon z. And your volumetric strain will be epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z. Very simple, right? Is me to koi doubt hi nahi hai apko. So what is the change in x direction? So that will be epsilon x is dl by l. Okay, change in length divided by length. So similarly, he is writing in y direction your epsilon y as dw by w, and in z axis he is writing dt by t. Okay. So now a very important derivation is going to come. Okay, just be focused. So what is the volume? Volume kya banta hai for this particular body which has the length l, width w, some thickness t okay so what is it so length into width into thickness very simple right to hum kya karenge ise differentiate kare so just before differentiating what you do apply the log okay log on both sides log on both sides so i am getting log v is equals to log l because log of a into b kya ho jayega log a plus log b right similarly i have here log of l into w into t so i am writing log l plus log w plus log t now you differentiate okay now you just apply the differentiation so just differentiate on the both sides so what you are going to get obviously you are going to get whenever uh, you are differentiating log value you will be getting reverse of it right so i am getting 1 by v dv okay here i am going to get 1 by l dl 1 by w dw plus 1 by t dt okay so what it is it is nothing but dv by v is equals to dl by l plus tw by w plus dt by t samajh mein aa gaya na concept so what is dv by v change in volume by its original volume it is nothing but your epsilon v okay so it is your volumetric strain so dl by l it is nothing but change in longitudinal direction divided by its original dimension in longitudinal direction so that will be your epsilon x similarly this will be your epsilon y and this will be your epsilon z concept is clear right now by seeing this i hope it is very clear for you you can write your volumetric strain as the strains in various dimensions i hope it is very clear right summation of various dimension ka strain kar lo to aapko kya aa jayega volumetric strain aa jayega clear concept now let us see the second system which is cylindrical coordinates if you have a cylindrical body so here it is very clear right yahan pe dimension aa jayega diameter d yahan pe dimension aa jayega diameter d so you need not worry about two different axes right so length you will be knowing that epsilon x which is nothing but longitudinal strain so you will be getting dl by l so what are the other two strains being developed it is one and the same it will be nothing but change in diameter divided by original diameter okay just write it as some sigma sigma y you can write no not a problem but what will be your volumetric strain volumetric strain will be your dl by l right plus Two times of your dd divided by d, because आपको तो ऐड करना है ना पूरे dimensions में ऐड करना है. So this epsilon y and epsilon z are one and the same. That's why I'm writing here as dl by l plus two into dd by d. Concept is clear, right? So if this is 
sigma whatever along the longitudinal axis right let us say it is epsilon 1 and along this let us say it is epsilon 2 strain is epsilon so you can write your volumetric strain when it comes to cylindrical coordinates as epsilon 1 plus 2 into your epsilon 2 concept is clear now comes spherical body okay in spherical system where it is very simple you know the sphere right how it will be so all the dimensions are one and the same right you have a ball length bhi wahi hai width bhi wahi hai height bhi wahi hai right so you can write your volumetric strain as 3 times dd by d where d is diameter of your sphere concept is clear samajh nahi aa so i hope it is very clear for you now let us see the last concept which is shear strain so in this shear strain we are trying to measure the angle of distortion first let us try to understand why the distortion is coming see let us imagine there is a particular surface in this case this remote it is fixed at the bottom now let us try to understand whenever you are trying to apply some load tangential to the surface okay so what is happening you can see it is getting angularly deformed agreed or not there is some angular deformation so you apply the load and it is getting deformed something like this tangential load jab apply karoge tabhi hoga right so what is happening in this case let us try to understand you have certain body and originally the body is something like this let me just kya ho gaya ise ha ah. so the body is something like this okay so you are applying it tangentially on the surface so what is happening to this let us try to understand so as a force is being applied you can just represent it like that a tangential hai to mai upar hi represent karu so what is happening it got angularly distorted just like how i have shown in this example right so it got angularly distorted so in this it is the shear strain is nothing but your angular uh, deformation so how to define this angular deformation that will be nothing but this particular angle phi right so your shear strain i can write it as phi or uh, tan phi okay so that is nothing but this this value divided by this value right tan theta kya ho jayega if this is x this is y then what is your tan theta that is nothing but x by y x by y that's it samajh nahi aa gaya na so if your angular deformation in this case let us say it moved this particular amount so a complicated hai yaar just delta l likh lo kya ja raha hai aapko and let us say this dimension is l okay so delta l divided by l you will be getting your shear strain okay tan phi is equals to delta l by l that's it you will be getting you can measure how much shear strain has this body been experienced when you are applying your tangential forces i hope it is uh, clear concept to samajh nahi aa gaya na so bahut sare log kya galti karte they take this delta l divided by capital l le lete the total length no 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 to be uh, very clear i am talking about uh, tan phi right so obviously this divided by this dimension okay this whatever small l is there that should be written here okay i hope it is very clear right and one more thing under pure shear the shape of body get distorted jaise maine dikhaya tha the body got distorted but volume change nahi ho raha volume is remaining same okay this is one of the bit which you can remember for your state pieces so direct bit under pure shear what is happening there is only shear force and nothing else okay there is no other direct uh, no, normal force or any other type of force so what is happening when you are experiencing a sh pure shear the body is getting distorted but the volume is remaining same there won't be any change in volume so one of the important bit for your state psc exam in the next module i am going to teach you a very important concept proof stress kya hota hai resilience kya hota hai so all these concepts a direct question can be coming for your esc as well as state psc exam so i am winding off see you in module number 3 of strength of materials have a nice day subscribe to this channel